everybody, in today's video I'm going to be talking about how I will be documenting my PCT through hike this year. And then at the end I'm also going to talk about just some general tips and kind of like some real talks about vlogging and blogging while on the trail. This stuff is also quite applicable to just general travel vlogging and so whether you have a through hike coming up or like a, a big round the world trip or something that might have kind of some logistical you know obstacles when it comes to uploading data and updating your followers hopefully this video will be helpful for you in the next couple weeks i'm going to be doing a full electronic gear video for you guys so i'm not going to talk specifically about the gear that i'm going to be doing all this updating and documentation on so there are four different ways that i'm going to document my through hike i'm going to document it through social media through blogging through vlogging and through making a documentary. So I'm just gonna walk through those four things as quickly as I can. Social media, Instagram, talking about Facebook, etc., etc. I'm gonna be doing all that on my iPhone 7 right here that I'm gonna be carrying. I'm only gonna be updating those platforms when I'm in town. My network is Sprint, and from what I hear, Sprint does not have very good service out on the trail. Big surprise. So I'm gonna have to wait until I have Wi-Fi to really be able to update. So I'm also gonna be updating through my blog, which is gracegoesglobal.com. I'm gonna be using the WordPress app on my iPhone 7 again. I'm also just gonna be uploading those blog posts when I'm in town. You're gonna see a pattern here. Everything's gonna have to be in the town. I love writing and I love doing my blog, but I hate writing on a phone. So I'm going to be really honest with you guys. My blog posts are probably not going to be super long and super descriptive because I'm just going to have to type it on my fingers and I'm going to hate that. So at the end of each day when I'm in my tent, I'm probably just going to write up a couple sentences of what happened that day, maybe a funny story, something like that. And then when I get into town, add some pictures and just upload it. So my blog posts are not going to be the most extraordinary PCT blog posts you've probably ever seen, but hopefully they'll still be informative and fun. Next up, I'm going to be vlogging throughout the whole trail. Again, I'm going to be vlogging on my iPhone 7. I will be uploading my videos when I'm in town. I'm going to be editing my videos probably through the iMovie app. I know a lot of people like make fun of iMovie and tell you how bad it is. I edit all my videos on iMovie. I mean, I do it through my computer most of the time, but it works fine. I mean, it's nothing fancy. You can't do anything extraordinary, but it works. And I feel the same way about the app. If you guys have any suggestions for better apps, please let me know. I've played around with some, and to me, I haven't found anything better than iMovie, and iMovie is free, so that's what I'm gonna do. Again, at the end of the day, when I'm in my tent, I'm probably just gonna edit a couple more clips and add on to them and so when I get into town I can just upload. I'm also going to be uploading all my data from my phone to my Dropbox account because then I'm gonna have to delete everything so that I have more space for more documentation. And finally I am going to be filming a documentary that is my plan. The camera that I'll talk about in my gear video in the next couple of weeks and what I'm filming on right now is what I'm gonna be filming that on. It is a nicer camera than my iPhone and it's quite heavy, so that is definitely my big luxury item. I'm gonna bring a couple lenses with me, but I'm gonna be filming all that documentary on this camera and also taking my really, really fancy, beautiful pictures on that. So the photos that I upload while I'm on trail hopefully will still be beautiful because the iPhone has a really great camera on it. But if you're waiting for like those really beautiful photos, I'm gonna upload those after I get back from the trail. How I'm gonna deal with like SD cards, I have a waterproof case, and it's kind of like waterproof, shockproof, all those things, and I'm just gonna carry a bunch of SD cards with me. I know a lot of people that will film and take photos on SD cards and then mail them back to their homes. I'm scared to do that because what if it gets lost in the mail, y'all? That has happened to me before. I've lost SD cards and it is the most tragic thing, and I still like get sick to my stomach thinking back on it. I lost so much amazing footage that I'll never ever go on that trip ever again and it's so sad. <sighs> so what I'm gonna do, now that I had that experience where I lost SD cards, I am so anal about my SD cards and so careful with them. So I'm just gonna carry them with me. And as I said, I bought a case for them that's waterproof and shockproof. And I'm just gonna be very careful not to lose them or do anything stupid. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully it works out because I trust myself taking care of them more than I trust 
them getting lost in the mail. So now, on to part two of this video, kind of the tips, real talk kind of thing. So I feel like documenting your through hike has become kind of a normal thing for people to do. I mean, lots of people say that they're gonna vlog their whole through hike or they're gonna blog the whole time and very, very few, I'm talking like maybe 2% of people end up actually doing that, their whole through hike. And I feel like there are three reasons why that is the case. So I think if you are aware of these three reasons, maybe you can be part of the 2% that actually <laughs> stick with it. Now I have been blogging since 2012 and vlogging since 2013 so I have over five years of experience doing this which is why I believe that I'm going to be part of that 2% because I do know what to expect but I think a lot of people going into a through hike or going into like a round the world trip and they want to document everything so they can remember it they don't realize these things and that's why they fall off the bandwagon. So first off Blogging and vlogging both take a lot of time and they are challenging, I'm not gonna lie. Now that I've been doing it for five years, pumping out videos is quite easy for me, but when you first start, it's a lot of work. And even now, it's still a lot of work. So you're gonna have to be able to make sacrifices if you want to document your whole trip. That means when everybody else is out, you know, swimming in a beautiful lake or or having fun in town, you might be the one who's like, hey guys, I'm gonna go sit back in my tent because I gotta edit these videos. I've had to do that many a time in my travels because it takes time. You can't just boom, 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 upload an awesome video. If you want quality video or quality blog posts, you have to put the time in and I think a lot of people don't realize how much time that's going to be and that also has to do with how much um, time you spend on your phone. Like, you have to have phone battery life available to you at the end of the day to upload and to edit these things. So that's another sacrifice you have to think about, having enough power to keep your phone or your camera going. Another big mistake I think people make is they get out on the trail and they are expecting to vlog or blog and they've never really done it before. They think their very first vlog is going to be out there on the trail and it's going to be great. I hate to poop on your paradise, but they're probably going to suck. I'm not going to lie. If you look back at my early vlogs, uh, my earliest vlogs was when I first moved out to California versus my vlogging now, it is such a world of difference. No one would want to watch those California vlogs except for like me and my friends that are in it because those are filled with memories, but they are so bad because I didn't know how to set up a shot. I didn't know proper editing. I didn't know good audio or good lighting or, oh my gosh, I didn't even know the content that people wanted to see. So they are really bad. Versus now that I've had five plus years of experience, a world world away from what they were. So if you expect your very first vlog ever out on the trail, which is already really challenging, to be a masterpiece, it ain't gonna be. So kind of think about your reasons. Is your reason for vlogging so that you can look back and have all these memories and just kind of keep these videos to yourself? Or is your reason because you want to build a following? Because if you want to build a following, you got to be a good vlogger or blogger before you get out on the trail. So practice before you get out there. If you are, you know, wanting to vlog, make a gear video. People love to watch gear videos. Or go out on a training hike and make a video about your training hike. That would be amazing practice. Make a travel video about your hometown. You might think your hometown is really, really boring, but someone will want to watch that because someone is going to come and visit your hometown. So make a video about what there is to see and do in your hometown. Those are great ways to practice before you get out there and believe me, it will make a huge difference. Write about something, get start practicing, get used to editing. That is a huge part of making videos and writing as well is editing. Another thing that I think people don't realize is how discouraging it can be, especially if you are brand new starting out. I have been blogging since 2012. I still feel like no one reads my blog. I mean, that's not entirely true. People do read it, but I'm a very, very small fish and I've been doing it for years. So if you are starting out, you're going to put so much work into this blog and you're going to feel like not a soul is reading it, except for maybe your mom. 
and that might be true, but that might not be true, but it's just really, really hard to get a following, especially on a blog. Same thing goes for vlogs on YouTube or whatever platform you're gonna use. It's really hard to get a following, especially if your videos are not good. <laughs> so you need to practice and practice because you want to produce really good content so that people will watch so then you'll feel like oh I'm not doing this for nothing again it does depend like if you're okay with putting out really bad videos because you're only making them for yourself and you don't care if anyone else in the world watches them then that it's okay but it's still gonna be a lot of work for that but if you're hoping that people are actually going to subscribe to you and follow your adventures then you gotta produce good content or people won't watch. So those are a couple things to think about, be aware of before you decide to start vlogging. I don't want anyone to feel discouraged. I just, I think a lot of people that get started on a through hike or any kind of travels and they say they're gonna document it and then they drop out, I think those are the reasons why. So if you're aware of those reasons and you know how to combat them, then Hopefully you can be successful in your vlogging. Just remember that it's not an easy, you know, no-brainer kind of thing. You do have to put the work in in order to have a good product. So there you go. I hope that this was a helpful video for you. Be sure to subscribe, please, and like this video. Give it a big thumbs up. Bye.